This over here is the 11600K i5 six core processor from Intel. And for creators, it makes more sense than you think. So if you are a creator who's under budget and looking for a CPU for under $300, then I'm not sure if there is anything better. There is the Ryzen 5 5600X, but let's just say that as a creator, I was quite surprised by the performance of this and I'd like to talk about it. First of all, I want to put the hate glasses aside and we've heard a lot about the Team Red and how good AMD is doing, but today I want to talk about the Intel processor and whatever we've thought about, whatever we feel like Team Blue has, let's just look objectively how good is it in actual live performance on some of these programs. So why am I making this video? I'm making this video because the holiday season is coming up and you might be finding these processes on a cracking deal. At the time of making this video, this processor goes for £240 or $270. So if you want to know the latest pricing, check out the links in the description below, especially when there's Amazon Prime Day deals and Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals coming on, you might be finding this on a cracking deal. One of the things that really surprised me is how much of an increase the 11th gen has over the 10th gen. 10th gen was like only a marginal upgrade from the 9th gen, but the 11th gen has quite a different architecture and there's things in here in this processor that are different from the last generation. For example, PCI 4.0 support finally on Intel system and upgraded integrated graphics on the chip. So if you look at the prices of the 11th gen i5 and the 10th gen i5, then the 11th gen often can be up to 20% better. So I'd stick with 11th gen if you can. So let's talk about the performance and in a moment you're gonna see absolutely buttloads of benchmarks on the screen. You can pause them whenever you want and make these benchmarks on your system to know exactly how good of a system this is. If you want to know my test bench setup and what configuration I got these benchmarks with, I'm going to leave them in the links below. See you in a moment. So let's conclude those benchmarks. If you're looking at Blender, we are 12% better than the Ryzen 5 5600X, which is actually very, very impressive. And I expected Intel to perform much less because, you know, the Turbo Boost time runs out and it clocks itself down and it's gonna get really hot, but actually it's quite a bit better in Blender. In terms of Photoshop, the 11600K is about 0.6% slower than the Ryzen 5 5600X, which basically is their performing experience exactly the same but the more impressive thing is that this i5 is 9.1% faster than the i9 9900k from only a little while ago. Lightroom Classic we are 8% slower than the Ryzen 5 and 3% slower than the i9 9900k. Now interestingly enough Premiere Pro is the program that we have the biggest leap over the Ryzen 5 and this is 16% faster than the Ryzen 5 5600X and 13% slower than the Ryzen 9 5900X compared with the RTX 3080 I was using 3070. Another thing I want to mention on the Premiere Pro actual benchmark is that the timeline performance on this Intel is quite a bit better because the Intel 
Intel internet integrated graphics has inside and utilizing the Intel QuickSync, a lot of the hardware accelerated codecs are actually quite a bit smoother on the Intel because the graphics card or dedicated graphics card and the iGPU, they work together quite nicely, especially if you're doing like lower end codecs or more mirrorless camera codex, H.264, H.265 codex, 420, which is hardware accelerated, this Intel felt much more smoother than the Ryzen 5. If you want to check out the whole video on the timeline performance on that, check it out up there once it's out, but it's coming out very, very soon. On After Effects, we are 13% slower than the Ryzen 5 5600X and 13% faster than the i9 9900K, which is very impressive because the i5 is faster than the i9 from the generation before the last generation. On DaVinci Resolve, the iGPU doesn't give so much of a performance uplift for the 11600K, so we're 5% slower than the Ryzen 5 5600X. Concluding my conclusion, I think this is for people who are looking for a budget CPU to edit on Premiere Pro and you're working on up to 4K footage. 4K and maybe B-Row 6K is fine as well, but 5K and above any other codecs don't really work on this so much. And if you're doing a little bit of photo editing on the side, especially if you're on Photoshop, it's literally the same as Ryzen 5 5600X. So if you find this on a cracking deal, this Intel 11600K makes more sense than you think. But if your workflow is more on Lightroom and DaVinci Resolve, for example, then the Ryzen 5 5600X makes more sense than this 11600K. Now this 11th gen also has a secret feature that I haven't seen talked about so much on YouTube space and that is hardware decoding for DaVinci Resolve on H.265 codecs. So if you're using H.265 codecs in usually Nvidia for example or AMD graphics cards have only 420 acceleration for the H.265 but this one has so much more. Basically whatever H.265 codec you have this 11th gen processor can actually hardware utilize this iGPU inside and play it back very very smoothly. So if your workflow is a lot on the H.265 codex and you're using DaVinci Resolve Ooh, this is a killer on the $300 CPU. Now, it wouldn't be a full review if we didn't talk about thermals and the wattage or power usage. Now, this chip is rated at 125 watt TDP, but I saw up to 190 watts being pulled from the socket. So the 125 watts TDP is a very optimistic view of this processor, which basically means when you're looking for a coolers for this chip, then don't get the cheapest ones or if some of the air coolers are maybe 130 watt TDP rated, I wouldn't go for them. Get a little bit of a better cooler. Now I was using 230 watt TDP rated air cooler and it seemed to be doing quite a good job over there. And if you want to know some of my recommendations for the coolers that you want to get for these, this processor, I'm going to leave them linked below. But if you want this to run cool, I'd get quite a beefy cooler for this. And now a little surprise thing. I hope you paid attention to the M1 benchmarks on some of these benchmarks that were running on the screen because you might be thinking why the heck would I get this 11600K I might as well get an M1 Mac mini and get a much better performance now if you paid close attention then the M1 Mac mini as spec'd out as you can get with it is usually about two times as slow as this or the Intel chip is twice as fast if not more now, let's look at the price point now. You might be thinking, hey, but the 11th gen is actually so much more expensive once you put the PC together. So I literally, as I was just before making this video, I put together like a test bench setup, just looked online and put together like an okay system or quite a good system actually for this one and then the Mac mini. So with Mac mini, if we put um, the 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage, we are 1100 pounds and that's similar with dollars if you're from the us but if we upgrade the storage to one terabyte which is i think more like reasonable then we are 1300 pounds now if we look at the intel system then we can get a full pc for 1350 quid including a graphics card of 3060 rtx 3060 which is so much more powerful than the graphics that's inside the M1 chip. And that PC includes 32 gigs of RAM, 11600K, one terabyte of storage, and you have so much more upgradability. 
So if I was a creator on a budget and I would be thinking, okay, which one do you want to go for? A Mac mini that has a zero upgrade path or this Intel system that costs 50 quid more, but has so much more power and so much more upgrade ability. To me, that is a no brainer. And I would go with this, especially if you're an editor on Premiere Pro and you're working like with 4K footage, this is going to be a killer system. I'm going to leave those in the description below as well. But the disclaimer over here is that I can't currently the price once the video has gone out because you know the systems and what's happening with the pc parts the prices might change in a bad way or but also in a good way you might find some of these things on a deal and i didn't even spend too much time or try to look so hard i literally looked at some of the good prices so you might be finding even a better deal if you know what you're looking for i'm going to leave those linked below so my friends hopefully this was a good conclusion if this is a good cpu for the creators and as you can see from this review if you look objectively this is actually quite a good processor and the team red isn't so far ahead the only thing this intel does more is consume so much more power let's just say it's three times the power that goes through this chip than ryzen 5 5600x but my friends likes if you enjoyed it subs if you'd like to see more and i will see you in the next one thanks guys for watching bye bye